there are many ways for you to create tasks in your environment. And I know for some of you, you're, you really enjoy just using perhaps a spreadsheet, right, or a list, and then have tasks created so that maybe different people within your organization want to manage it differently or whatever that looks like. So stay tuned. We're going to actually look at the simplicity of creating a planner task without re ever going into planner itself to create that task. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to this. So if, if you're one of those people who, who really just want to use a list, for example, you're just committed to using that list, that's totally fine. You can do that to create planner tasks. But let's say some of your organization might be using planner to do their items. So how do you create tasks in that? Or maybe you're using a form that's filling in a um, SharePoint list, or maybe you're using a Power App that's filling in a SharePoint list as the data source. How do you create tasks from all of those variables? Well, we're going to show you how to do that. The first place to start is to create the list itself. So I just created a list here called tasks, and I'm just going to walk through these real quick here. Notice that this is a, um, a single line of text, what the action item is. The details is a multiple line of text. So what are the details of the task? Who's assigned is a single line of text, I believe, as well. Yep. And then due date is actually a date field. And if I'm going too fast, just pause the video. Date and time field. And then this ID is here. To get to the ID, you want to go here, go to Show and Hide Columns, and you want to select ID. Now, one other thing before we move off of creating the list to feed Planner with its tasks is notice that I don't have title here. The reason why I don't use title is because when you get into automation, like for example, this says action item, I want to see, and you're going to see when we create the Power Automate flow to create the Planner task in just a moment, you're going to see that I want it to say action item details aside. I want it to show me this, right? Notice I don't use any spaces as well. Everything's all together. It just makes the automation a little easier on the other end. So you can do it however you want. You could use the title field if you want to. Click title column because it's the default when you create a new list. But you're just going to have to remember that action item equals title. Because it won't show up as action, it'll show up as title in your automation. Now, so if I decide not to use title, how do I get rid of it? So the way you do that is go down here to um, Site Contents. And then find the list that you're working on. In this case, it happens to be Tasks. And just hit Settings. And then you want to go down here to where it says Title. And if you just created a list, it's going to say Required there. Just select this and say no. When it comes up here, you're just going to say, nope, I don't want that required. Okay. And so that's it for our tasks list. So we have to remember that it's tasks. I have a lot of lists in here for different videos, but tasks is the list. And just to get started, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, just leave it just like that. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and create a flow. Now, to do that, of course, we're going to go to our waffle here, our app launcher, and um, we're just going to hit Power Automate. And I always do a right click and go open a new tab. That's what I've done here. And we're going to hit the Create button. Okay. Now, with the Create button, we're going to go ahead and hit an automated cloud flow. And what I want to do is I want this to automate every time that a um, when a new item is created, okay, inside of SharePoint. Remember, this right here is the SharePoint logo, right, the forms logo. So, for example, you could do exactly what we're talking about here with a form as well, or you can see these other triggers as well. So, you can kind of be creative on it. So, here, go ahead and select an item when SharePoint has been created, and we're going to just put a, a name in here. You can use any name that you want, but we're just going to say SharePoint to Planner. Okay? And we're going to hit Create. 
Once that comes up, you're going to want to pick your site address. So we're going to go ahead and select down here. And we're going to go to that site address, which happens to be personal. And then we're going to select the list in there. And if you remember right, the list that we're selecting is tasks. That's all we need to do on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse that screen. Then the next thing we want to do is is create a task. So let's go ahead and just create a task right here. Okay, and you see right there, pretty easy. We're going to use this one under preview. And now we're just going to go ahead and select the, we're going to select that group ID as well. Okay, so we're going to say, where is it? Again, it's going to be right under personal, where we were. Oops, the daisy. Hold on. I'm sorry. There it is. Right there. Personal. Okay. And this is where we're going to create the task. So the plan is called personal as well. So you're going to need to know inside of Planner what that looks like. So let me, so you're just going to go to Planner itself, right? And so let's go ahead and do that real quick. We're just going to open up Planner. And then we're going to work. We're going to know which area we want it created in. Notice, remember, I have lots of different plans in here. In this case, I'm going to personal, and that's the name of it. And then we're going to use this to do bucket. Okay? So just kind of keep that in the back of your head where you want to create this. And then the title of the task itself, we're going to enter in a few, few things here. First of all, we want to enter in the name of the task. Now, notice we don't want to say title, right? Because we're not using that field. Action item is what we want to name. And if we forget what that is, it's right here, action item. Okay. So we want to name that action item. Now we want to put in, if we want to put in additional information, we could do this here. Now for me, I just create the action item and then I hit the space bar once. And now I want to put in the date. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to type in UT. C, and it's going to come right up, UTC now, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I could put in the date, but instead I want to format that date in a specific way. So I'm going to say format date and time, okay? And now I'm going to hit there. Then I'm going to put in UTC now, okay? So it's just a little different approach. Now watch, I'm going to put in a comma there. And then I'm going to specify what information I want. And in this case, all I want is the month and the day. Whoops. And that's it. That's all I want. Okay. So it should look like that and hit OK. Now you have that in there. Now for me, I like to put in a period. So it's the month and day, period. And then I want to put in a random number. So I'm going to go back here to my expression. I'm going to type in random. Ran. Okay. And by the way, I don't know if it will work or not. If I hit the tab key, that, that will work as well. Okay. But here we just want to put in a random number. And the random number we want to put in is a range of numbers. So whatever that range looks like. For me, I want to start at 1 and I want to end at 99. So I don't want to go more than 100 in my random range. I'm going to hit OK. Now, I'm going to use square brackets because that's what I like to do. So I'm going to put one at the beginning there as well. So essentially what's going to happen is the title of the task itself is going to have the action item. I'm going to format the date and I'm going to put in a random number. This is going to give me a unique ID for every single task. And that is very important because um, it makes it easier to find when you have a lot of tasks. Okay, Here on the task due date, I'm going to click there and I'm going to go in and notice here that um, I can't see all. I'm going to hit see more. Okay, so I can see everything. Sometimes people are like, well, it's not there. We'll just hit see more. It's going to be there. Okay, now we put in a due date inside of here. So let's just go ahead and search for that field. And there it is right there, due. You notice know, the SharePoint field. So we're just going to hit click. Okay. So that's going to put in the date inside of there. And then we're going to put in an assigned user. And in this case, I'm just going to assign myself 
Okay. So pretty easy there. And it's going to assign me. Now, this user has to be assigned inside of Planner. So when you look at your members, you want to make sure this user exists. If it doesn't, it's not going to it's not going to assign it, okay? So we want it to assign it. And notice here, this is an example of that unique identifier as well. All right, so let's continue on here. So that's pretty cool. We got that squared away. So we're just going to leave that. And that's all that we're going to do on that section. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to update task details. And this we're going to do by kind of updating the details with some additional information. Remember, we have that details field. So what we're going to do here is just say update. Okay. And we're going to put in task details right there. Okay. We're going to click on that. And then for our task unique ID, we're going to click there and we're going to go down to the bottom here. We're going to hit, hit enter a custom value. And then here, where it asks for the custom value, we're going to type in ID. Okay? And then right there is the one you want to pick, the ID of the task. So we got that. That's easy. Now in the description, let's go ahead and put some other information. Now remember, in the description of the task is right in here. This is all the details right here. Okay? So the description of the task, we're going to do a few things. We're going to say title of task. Okay? You know, put in a little colon, and then we're going to do that again. Remember, we did it up here, and we called it action item, right? So we can go here, and we're going to go again. We're just going to type in action item. There it is. And we're pulling this from our SharePoint list, right? That's the title of the task, action item. Details is the next one we're going to put in there. So let's go back, and then we're going to say, great. So that looks good. We're going to hit enter. And then we're going to say details of task. Okay. And then we're going to put in here. We'll just put in details. There it is right there. So it's pretty easy. It's not really that tough, right? And so um, then the last thing we're going to say is start. Um, or we're going to say, how about task creation date? Okay. And we're going to hit... Um, we're going to go ahead and put in here uh, creation. And you see here, created date and time. We could do that. We could say when the item was created within SharePoint. So let's we could pick that one. Let's say that one, okay? So when the item was created, okay? That's pretty easy. And then, um, oh, and then we want to take these details, by the way. We're going to hit Control X. And we're going to put them down underneath here because if we have a lot of details, we don't want to kind of mess this up, right? And then the last thing that we can put is um, today's date, okay? So we could do that. I'm just kind of putting things in here. You could do whatever you want, okay? But let's just stop there. We won't do today's date. Now, let's see. Is there anything else in here? Now, we did put an ID in there, so let's go ahead and put that in, in there. We're going to put here SharePoint ID. Now, we have a little bit of a cross-reference, right? So, let's go ahead and just search for ID. And then there it is right there, ID. Okay? I'm just going to put that in there. And that's about it. That's all we need to do. So, let's go ahead and test this out to make sure it works. So, it's pretty easy. So, go ahead and hit Save. Okay, notice it's saving. It's going to take a minute. We're going to hit test. We're going to hit manual, test. Now it's going to say, go ahead and put something into SharePoint. So we're going to hit edit and grid mode, and we're going to say test task. Okay, details. We're going to say assigned, and we're going to type in my, my email address. Should have made a shorter name there. All right, and due date. We're going to put in today, okay, and then ID we can't change, so we're just going to hit there, and we're going to hit exit. Okay, now if we go back over, we're going to see that it's running, and we have an error. Notice here that it did not find 
this email, and that's because I put a dot in there. Remember, I told you you have to have uh, the right information in there, so let's go ahead and just correct that real quick. So I use the dot in most everything else. So let's go ahead and update that. Hit save. I would like to say that was on purpose, but um, I'm sorry, it's not on purpose. So let's go ahead and just delete this real quick. And I apologize. I know you don't want to see me kind of doing all this, but let's go ahead and just run this test one more time uh, just to see. All right. So should work now. Let's go ahead and go back over to that SharePoint list, edit in grid mode. We're going to say action. We're going to say beats, details. We're going to say um, Jeffrey Lush at the milestones.com. Okay, we're going to select the date. Okay, and that's it. Okay, we're going to save that out. We're going to see if this works. And it should. And it did run successfully. Now, to check that, remember we can see here, we can go right here. And it can tell us that it hit the hit it, and then we can go to output if we want. Click to download. We can see all that, but that doesn't really help a lot. Okay, unless you're really troubleshooting. We can see where it created the task. Notice here it created the task. It gave it the title, the date. Okay, everything looks good, right? So let's go ahead and go inside the task and actually see if it's there. We're going to click on there. We're going to hit refresh. All right. And there it is right there. Action. That's the one we just created. Now, where this failed is that we did not specify a bucket. That's why it's in no bucket. But let's see if everything else worked. So here we have the date and Zulu time. And see how that we could format time and change that, right? Just like we did here with the format time. Here's the action right here, and here's the details right there. You're good to go. So congratulations. Now, if you want to stay tuned here, I'm sorry for the length of the, this, but we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a couple of these things, like the bucket, for example. So let's go ahead and go back in there. We're just going to click on this bucket right here, and we're going to say, I want to put that in my to-do bucket. Bing. We got that. No problem. And then the other thing that was a little squirrely was the update details, right, task creation date. So let's go ahead and take that off. And we know that the task creation date is going to be the current date. So we're just going to say format date and time. And by the way, notice I hit an F. I'm going to hit my tab key. Okay. And then I'm going to say uh, UTC now. I'm going to hit my tab key again. Right. And then I'm going to put in the format that I want to see. And so in this case, I'm going to put the month, the day, and the year. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And then that should work for us. So let's go ahead and save that. And we're going to hit test one more time so you can see that work. Manual test. Again, I apologize. I really don't like my videos going over 15 minutes. But here we're going to go ahead and go back over to SharePoint. Let's edit this. Let's just say here, action two. Okay, and details we'll put in there, and then uh, because I don't want to copy that, write it again, we're just going to copy that in, okay, and then we're going to pick a different date, good, and then we're going to hit uh, go, okay, so now we have two, notice it automatically IDs it for us, we're going to go back over to our, um, it ran, right, we're going to go back over here to planner, and then we're going to hit refresh, and action two appears right there. Notice it is signed properly. Everything's good to go. Notice also that the SharePoint ID is correct. SharePoint ID is six. Everything seems to be working. And now you have this as your format uh, for your date creation, right? The fourth uh, month, day, year. That's it. Good luck.